This is 130 beds uh, being run by one of our former interns, Carla Arroyo Rizzo, in Veracruz State in Mexico. This is in Slovenia, when our farmer teacher trainers, all who have given a 20-year commitment to this kind of work, can you imagine in today's world how many people commit to more than a one year, uh, or maybe three, possibly two? So when they saw this, they started crying, crying out of joy. Grow Biointensive has the capacity to produce higher yields and increased income, use less than 33% of the water, use 50 to 100% fewer purchased nutrients, and you're gonna find out how important that is, because you know that in the whole world for both chemical and organic fertilizers, we're at peak nutrient. There's shortages now of phosphorus, potassium, nitrogen, and other nutrients. But what we're doing is we're doing closed loop we don't use the word sustainable anymore because it means so many different things. But with closed loop, it means you recycle everything. And it means that once you build up the nutrients on a one-time only basis, you keep them there and you're not gonna be plagued by nutrient shortages that are plaguing the whole world. And it uses less than 10% of the energy in all forms. Biointensive is not the solution. You're the solution. Biointensive is just a tool. If you use it wrongly, you're gonna deplete the soil. If you use it properly, you're gonna build it up 60 times faster than happens in nature. It's amazing. So you, we all are the solution. And localization, well, the reason this got adopted in Mexico is because it didn't cost the people any money and it produced more food with less water. What we want is fully sustainable farming through growing a living sponge cake through the people in uh, the, the Latin countries call this Sponja Vivante, the living sponge cake. Newsweek magazine called biointensive soil the soccer torta, the best kind of pastry of soils. Living soil is the most important resource in the world. If you don't take anything else away from today, that should be something you take. Do you realize there's more living organisms in a spoonful of soil than there are human beings on this earth? Now look at these two photographs. This is from an, a booklet about soil from the Brooklyn Botanical Society and they've given us permission kindly to use it. The upper photograph is of soil that's been pre uh, prepared 10 inches deep. Do you see how the root systems grow? And the bottom one is 20 inches deep and you get twice the amount of roots. Now, most agriculture only prepares the soil six inches deep. So if we're preparing the soil actually 24 inches deep, four times deeper, so this means you get four times the nutrient cycling. It's fantastic. Now, how deep do you think a carrot root grows? This is a setup, but why don't two or three people speak up and tell me how deeply, unless you know the answer, uh, how deeply a carrot root grows? What? 12 inches, okay, that's our first uh, vote. Three feet, okay, so we have three feet and one foot. As nominees, any other ideas? Hmm? More than two feet? More than three, okay, that covers a lot of territory. <laughs> okay, it's eight feet deep. If you look on page 16 of the new How to Grow More Vegetables, I think it's on that page, you'll see. It's amazing. Of course, when you harvest the carrot, you don't get that root, it just pops off. But do you want a soil that's been prepared very loosely, deeply, and you know, you don't, the goal isn't double digging. Double digging's a tool. And once you've got created good soil structure two feet deep, you don't have to double dig anymore. You just loosen the upper two to four inches with a hula hoe. So, wow, it's worth the investment. Now, this is incredible. We knew it was true, but finally we ran across the photographs that showed it. Did you know that if you put seeds in the ground, direct so, this is the kind of root system that you get right over there. And if you start the seeds in a flat and you prick them out into the flat after they've been in the first flat, the kind of root system you get before you transplant is in the middle of the photograph. But if you prick them out a second time, you get even more roots. 
So we had a person who was on our certified track, and he was just absolutely positively certain that pricking out as opposed to direct selling was ridiculous. So we finally uh, prevailed and encouraged him to try it. And in three separate trials, he found out with lettuce, he got double the yield every time. The reason why is you have more roots feeding the plants. Do you want with about the same amount of effort? Do you want to get double the yield? Why not? Now this, I only figured this out about eight years ago. I've been doing it for, what is it, 37 years? And I was sitting in a class and I realized, you see, if you raise your seedlings in flats, this is one of the most important things in the world. If you're raising your seedlings in flats, you use maybe half a gallon of water a day per flat, and you only need one flat per bed. And if you have a 40 bed unit, which is 4,000 square feet, then you're using about 20 gallons a day. But if you're watering all these beds and you have a 40 bed unit, you're gonna be uh, water using 4,000 gallons of water a day. Let's see if I got, no, excuse me, 400 gallons of water a day. But here's the key thing. Enough water can be saved to grow all the food for one half to one person annually if you choose the crops carefully, plus leave you 15 gallons of water a day for washing your dishes, brushing your teeth, taking a bath, doing the laundry. Now the UN has predicted that in the next nine years, up to 5.5 billion people, two thirds of the world's people may starve to death because there's not enough water to grow any food or enough food for them to survive. So I know this seems a little sort of, I don't know, overly conceptual, but it's very practical.